Saturday, September 9th. Life goes on, all right. When I came downstairs for breakfast, Mom and Dad were arguing. Mom was sitting on the stool at the kitchen counter. Dad and Eric were standing in the doorway, ready to exit. Eric was letting Dad do all the talking. Look, there's nothing wrong with me taking Eric to practice this morning. Mom clearly did not agree. You don't schedule a football practice on the morning of your team captain's funeral. It's a private funeral. We were not invited to attend that funeral. That's not the point. You should show respect for the family by canceling practice on the morning of the funeral. Dad had heard enough. Well, Coach Warner did not think that was appropriate, so he didn't do it. The season begins in one week and we need to get out there. You need to get out there? That's right. Every team in this county is practicing this morning, and so are we. And while we're at it, Coach Warner did not schedule this practice on the morning of the funeral. These weekend practices have been scheduled all along. It's not fair for you to say that he doesn't care about his players, or that he doesn't care about Mike Costello be just because he continues to do his job. Mum didn't reply, so Dad and Eric completed their exit. Mum's final word on the subject was to me. Coach Warner cares about his players so much that he pushes them out into the lightning every day. Joey called at 2.30. Mom answered the phone. She offered to drive us, so Joey showed up at our door at 2.45. Mom asked him how the services went. He said, fine, and that was that. We didn't talk about it again. Life went on. We got into Mom's car and drove to the carnival. I was curious to finally see the town of Tangerine. In all the time we've lived here, we've driven in every direction but this one. We've gone west to the supermarket, south to the mall, north to the schools, but never east to the town. As we headed up Route 89, Joey said, My dad told me that all this used to be tangerine groves, as far as the eye could see. It was the tangerine capital of the world. Mom turned off the highway at Route 22 and drove east through the citrus groves. The air was filled with a remarkable scent. Joey said, what is that smell? That's gross. I said, you're crazy. I love that smell. That's the citrus. Something is in bloom now, huh, Mom? Mom said, I don't know, honey. We drove for another mile. We passed a cluster of lime green houses made out of cement block. I said, check out that color, Mom. You better notify the architectural committee. Mom was not amused. This isn't a development, Paul. Then how come the houses are all the same color? Mom thought about that and replied, Maybe you're right. Maybe this is some kind of early development. Maybe the owners of the packing plant built these houses for their workers. The migrant workers? No, I don't think so. The migrant workers would come and pick fruit for a few weeks and then move on. But there must have been permanent workers, citrus packers who lived here year-round. Like Joey was saying, this used to be the tangerine capital of the world. Now the tangerine industry is dead. Look, over there. That's the old packing plant. It was strange to see an old packing plant, to see an old anything. But it was also comforting to hear that something around here has a history, that something actually belongs here. It makes sense. I can see how it worked. The citrus packers walked from those lime green cement block houses into that packing plant, that huge and magnificent structure. It must have been built red brick by red brick to be the most magnificent building the workers had ever seen, like a European cathedral. So why did it stop working? When did it all go wrong? Whose fault was it? Maybe the people from the lime green houses just got tired of walking into this building every morning. Maybe they stopped seeing how magnificent it was. And now it's all gone. It's all over. Something else, is someplace else, is now the tangerine capital of the world. We didn't see much else of the town because suddenly, right in front of us, were the rides and tents of the carnival. Low rent was a compliment for this thing. It was set up in a big field of dirt next to a sign that read, Tangerine Flea Market Every Sunday. Mom dropped us off in the parking lot, which was another field of dirt across the road. She said, Are you sure your boys want to get out here? Yeah, Joey laughed. Maybe he thought Mom was kidding. Mom sighed. Okay, when do you want to be picked up? 
I don't know. Joey, what do you say? Seven o'clock? Joey thought about it. Yeah, that's cool. Mom called. All right, I'll see you two here on this spot at seven o'clock. Be careful. We will, Mom. Bye. As we waited to cross the busy road, Joey handed me a discount ticket and said, They're from Coach Walski. Just outside the entranceway, I saw a group of guys with a soccer ball. They were good. Three of them were doing the juggling bit with a ball, like Tomi Okoso does. But they were passing it back and forth, too. I stopped to watch for a minute, and a kid called over to me, Hey, give me one of those tickets. I only got one, I said. Yeah, so I only need one. Hand it over. Joey grabbed my elbow and hustled me away. Come on, man, don't mess with those guys. They're from Tangerine Middle. So? Don't talk to them and don't look at them. We handed over our tickets and passed through a turnstile. They have gun gangs in Tangerine Middle School. They have kids with guns, man. Real gangsters. Some of them have AK-47s. No way. Hey, don't believe me. Just don't mess with them because I ain't bailing you out. We walked quickly past the octopus and another ride that looked like a swinging axe pendulum. Joey called out, There they are. There's Kara and Carrie and the guys. I was thrilled. I'd been secretly hoping this would happen. Kara came up and put her arm around Joey right away. Unfortunately, nobody, including Carrie, paid much attention to me. The three guys, who I sort of knew from classes and lunch, were all talking about going to a freak show in the back of the carnival. Kara and Carrie were saying things like, Oh, gross! And no way! Everybody was disappointed when we actually got inside the freak show, called Wonders of the World. Everybody except me. I was really fascinated as I was prowled through the dark, partitioned rooms of the exhibits. There were mostly photos, but there were some wax statues, too. The exhibits had names like The Woman with the Third Eye, The Buffalo Man, and The Frozen Fraulein. I lost the rest of the group when I stopped to read about the boy who never grew. According to the sign, this boy stopped growing at the age of five, but he went on to live until the age of 89. And although he was studied by the top doctors in Europe, he remains a mystery to this day. No one ever discovered what had happened to him to cause this strange affliction. I peered into the eyes of the photo for a long, long time. When I came out of the wonders of the world, blinking in the sun, my classmates were all gone. The guys who I'd seen at the entrance with the soccer ball were there, waiting to go in. They were too busy karate kicking each other to notice me. I turned left and headed toward the big double Ferris wheel. I watched it being loaded, seat by seat. The wheel rotated up, and I saw Kara and Joey sitting close together on a seat. It rotated again, and I saw Carrie. She was sitting with one of the guys from the group. A guy named Adam. A guy who doesn't wear glasses and who knows how to talk. I spun around and walked the other way, eventually stopping at a snow cone place. After about half an hour by myself, I caught up with the group again. No one had noticed that I was gone. Carrie wound up going on the caterpillar with Adam, too. I didn't go on any rides. Seven o'clock finally came. I went and stood at the entrance. I could see that Mom was already in the lot. Joey kept me waiting for ten minutes, then ran up and said, You ready? Yeah, I've been ready. We crossed the road and climbed into the air-conditioned car. Mum cried out, Look at that! We looked, and we saw that the gang of soccer kids from Tangerine Middle all climbing into the back of a light green, classic Ford pickup truck. Yeah, cool truck, Joey and I said, almost at the same time. No, no, Mum continued. Look at the truck and tell me what's wrong with this picture. We looked again and I noticed the words Thomas Cruz Groves, Tangerine, Florida, written on the door. Do you mean that they spelled Thomas wrong? Honestly, Paul, she snapped. Can't you be serious when I ask you a question? But I am being serious. Mum pointed at the pile of kids who were now riding toward the exit. Seat belts! They're not wearing any seat belts. Not one of them. And how could they? They're all bouncing around in the back of that truck like a bunch of golden retrievers. Well, that's up to them, isn't it? No, that is not up to them. 
That is against the law. One good bump and they'll break their necks. Why do we bother passing safety laws? People will still throw six kids into the back of a truck and drive them out onto the highway. Mom drove in silence all the way home, angry about the driver of the pickup truck. It doesn't take much these days to make her angry. It doesn't, I was feeling pretty miserable myself about Carrie Gardner, about soccer, about my whole life here. I remembered the face of the boy who never grew, the face of that 89-year-old little boy. I remembered the fear in his eyes. I know that fear. It's my fear. They may as well stick me in there next to him. A picture came to me, nasty yet satisfying. I could stop trying to be what everybody else is and accept being a freak. They could open a new exhibit starring me, a modern exhibit called The Children Who Wouldn't Listen. Stomach cramps boy who went swimming right after lunch. Refrigerator door boy sealed forever to stay fresh. An eclipse boy studied by the greatest doctors in Europe, but still a mystery to this day.